Hello and welcome to dig number four of the soul of an artist excavation. Now today is going to be very much together, more together than my other stuff. My stories don't always match the artwork, but I don't let that stop me. Now today is a little different. Today the artwork is going to match the story. So I wanted to go over materials real quick. And you know, of course I have all of this stuff out and readily available to use. And I may or may not use everything. You know how it goes here on my channel. So let's get into this. Now I've got some seashells here and I'm only gonna use a couple of these for focal points, but I have quite a number of these little clam style seashell, blah, 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 seashells here. So we'll be using those. Let me set those over here. Now for the next fun thing, I've got this driftwood and I got mine at Hobby Lobby and I would guess that you could probably get this all over the internet. And if you're lucky enough to live by the beach, you could probably go grab your own. So I'm gonna be using some of that. And then I've got some cream colored embroidery floss here. And then I've got this really beautiful netted fabric and it's far thicker than cheesecloth and I don't know where I picked this up but they sell a lot of this type of fabric at Joann's and various places during Halloween so I'm just not sure where I got this now I've got some nice thick burlap here too and this stuff is great because you can really fray the heck out of this but um, you can stop it from fraying by painting it gluing it or stitching it so you've got lots of options there and then I've got some beautiful coffee stained papers that I did a very long time ago. And I do have a coffee stain video. It's a little bit longer, but I will go ahead and link that below. And I show how to get impressions like this is a piece of lace on this here. So I do show how to do that in that video. So I've got some various beads here. And I may or may not use them. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know I want to, but that doesn't mean I will, right? <laughs> and then canvases. I've got something to say about the canvases, so we'll get into those in a minute. Now, of course, I've got my Reflections Gold Flex here that I get at Michael's. I love this stuff. Use it all the time. And then also today, I've got some very small pieces of broken up seashell and you can find this in the decor aisle just about anywhere you can get those seashell pieces and you can also get packages of bigger bits of seashell as well and then in here along with these I separated these out because I'm thinking I may want to use these for this project I've got a couple I have um, I have a ton of crystals wire wrapped because one of the things I like to do is lay in bed and watch TV and wire wrap crystals so I've got a couple of these and they're kind of this peachy orangey color and I really like this color for the palette that I'm after. I think it goes really pretty. Let me bring you in. I just like how it goes together with the seashells and the gold fleck. I think it's just going to be pretty i like that combo and then i've got a few stained bone beads as well so you know i'm gonna use some may use all may not now i've got some skeleton leaves handy too and you know me i love to use these in anything and everything i do so that's definitely going to be added to this this is just some more seashell bits and some more burlap now these little canvases are an artist oh i guess i should back yep hello a little bit more 
<laughs> this is an artist loft product here, which is Michaels. Okay, that's a fun way of saying Michaels, or they're in partnership with Michaels. You get it. These are, you get a two pack of four by 12 inch canvases and they are not the deep edged. You can, if you go to the canvas section, get the deep edged ones. But I wanted to show you guys, now I'm big into recycling and I'm not a crazy Karen by any stretch of the imagination. I do not go, and I really hate that they call it Karen because that's my sister's name. But I don't go yelling at people to recycle or anything like that but I am very big into it myself and you know you hear all this shaming these days about climate change and saving the planet and you know what I'm all for saving the planet but I ask you okay this is canvas for the love of Pete this it's not a package of cookies and some of the canvas boards I get each canvas board is individually wrapped so I may call Michaels I don't want to come across like a total jerk I really don't but I have to say this drives me bonkers look at all this waste for something that's not even food arg, 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 arg. so I just wanted to get a little complainy for a second and now I'm over it now that you have seen what I'm talking about Ugh, my goodness there's just so much talk about it but yeah I don't see action I like to see action back up all the talk you know what I'm saying when I talk the talk I need to walk the talk and walk the walk you get it so here's these and then of course I'm going to be using my Mod Podge mat it's my go-to glue I love to use it I have this little dollar store uh, sauce container that I use to make it more manageable and then I just use whatever brush I have handy and of course I clean them up real good so that they're not destroyed so I'm gonna for the rest of the video I'm just gonna create and probably speed it up a little bit and then fluctuate between voiceover and music so let's get into this so I'm switching over now the beginning of this video it was just easier to talk and go through everything with my mic and my camera and now I'm voiceovering so I hope it's not too much of a difference I think I got all the bugs worked out now now for this project I wanted to cut the canvas off of the frame like you see and then those pieces of frame I'm going to hang on to and use to make handmade paper next summer so I'll be showing you that too and then I've got my deckled edge ruler there to cut up some of this paper now the story I have for you today is a really neat one it's um, something that happened with me a few years ago and I grew up in a pretty bad neighborhood and you know it was rife with prostitutes and drug dealers and drug addicts and I had to catch the bus every day to get to school in this neighborhood and you know I learned real quick to get really mean myself and so that worked for me and it worked for a lot of years and then as I got older uh, I was so locked into that habit and it did really continue to work for a very long time but um you know I was living in this apartment with my daughter as I was older and another bad neighborhood and another dangerous situation and I was such an angry angry person and I hated the world but I hated God and I hated myself and you know my solution was the liquor store on the corner that's how I dealt with my problems at that time in my life and you know the hatred I was experiencing was really deep but um fast forward a little bit and I decided that getting sober was going to be a great idea for me and it took me a really long time it took me six years of trying to get sober to actually succeed at it and i did succeed at it and i'm here today as a result of that but 
early on in when I started to take being sober seriously, I had a friend who suggested to me that I write a list of what I want my higher power to look like, what I would like my relationship with God to look like. So I took it seriously and I did it. And, you know, the list, I lost it just like I lose all my lists, but the list was not the priority. The priority came from writing the list. Uh, this relationship started to develop between me and spirit as a result of, of saying yes to writing this list. And I'm just adding all this lovely stuff. I'm sure it's pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing here. But um, so I did that. And then, you know, one night I, I was in this phase when all this was going on of really trying to understand God. You know, I was very angry about the state of the world. And I still go there sometimes, of course, and angry about, you know, little kids get hurt and all of those things that we get upset about living this life, right? Well, <clears throat> one night, excuse me, I was laying in bed and I was talking with God saying, you know, I really want to understand you and I need help. I need help understanding you. I don't understand. And uh, so then you know, as the evening went on, I started to fall asleep. And I got to tell you, the favorite, my favorite, favorite state of being is that floating between being awake and falling asleep. I love that so much. But that's where I was at at this point. And I had this like dreamy vision. And it was this voice came through to me. And you know, to me, it was God speaking to me. And it said, I don't really look at God as a he, by the way. I look at God as a very loving, wise energy. I thought I should give you that little detail. But the voice said to me, when you can hold a handful of sand and count every single grain without dropping any of it, then you'll understand me. Ha, huh. okay. So then I was wide awake. And what I took away from that was I was so, for months at that time, up until that moment, I was so intent and really on a mission to understand God. And I kept coming at it from this intellectual place. And that vision that night basically told me, you know, you're never going to be able to understand me intellectually. I speak the language of the heart. So that's what I took away from that night. And I, I was able to let go of my, of this crazy, crazy need to understand spirit on an intellectual level. Um, you know, I, I love this story and I love sharing this because I know that if I have this struggle, you know, you may not be in this place right now. And that's wonderful. If you're in a really good place uh, spiritually, I love that. I am so excited about that. But here's how I got to my place, you know, and this is just one of many things that happened, but it's one of the most profound things. It taught me that I don't have to understand every single little thing that goes on spiritually with me. And, you know, it took me a really long time. I've got to say, I'm going to go back for a minute to my upbringing in this bad neighborhood that we lived in. And, you know, I, I just, from very early on, I understood very quickly that, if I scowled, I, I caught buses as a girl, as a, a, a young teenage girl. I was going to say preteen, but I was a teenage girl around 13 years old and up until I got my license. Um, I was catching buses on the same road that women were prostituting themselves 24-7. And I lived less than a block from this road. And I had men 
trying to get me in their cars every morning and every afternoon when I was trying to get to and from school. And I learned very quick how to scowl and look as hateful and vicious as I could. And there's a lot to be said for that. That protected me. I ended up being um, very safe because of that attitude. And I not only um, presented that attitude, I felt that way. I felt the hatred that I was conveying and that went on for years. So for this vision to show up of counting the grains of sand was such a loving message is the way I took it. It was like, you know, you don't have to get it. You don't have to get it on an intellectual level. You need to learn how to listen to me with your heart. And ever since then, I have been practicing that skill. And I have had an incredible, incredible time as a result of that. And, you know, we get very hung up on asking for guidance and asking for help. But we're not trained in any of this. You know, we're so trained out of our power in the society that I'm in. And I think in most societies on earth, not just my country of the USA, but a lot of countries, I think we're very trained to look outside of ourselves for the answers and to look outside of ourselves and buy this and do that and you'll be all right. No, you know, we need to learn how to, I, let me just speak for me. I needed to learn how to listen with my heart and with my intuition. And I've been doing this for a long time and I it is second nature to me. And I was doing I, I've always followed my intuition. So that was that hasn't been anything new to me for many, many, many years. Even as a young lady, I was very good at listening to my intuition. But I've had to train myself in these spiritual practices because the people in my life were not practicing this. The people in my life today are not practicing this. A lot of them say they are, but you know, it's, it's one thing to go and worship on Sunday. It's another thing to have a daily intimate relationship with spirit. And I need that every day, and I've come to rely on that every day. So, you know, I hope that you like this little story. And, you know, this project is my symbol of this story. And I'm going to hang on to these because this is the one time I've never made anything to go along with this memory and I'm getting older and <laughs> you know there's certain things that I like to look at in my home that are symbolic of some of my memories and this is absolutely one of those things. So I hope you try this and make some artwork and you know, look over the events in your life that you uh, that have moved you and changed you and shaped you and maybe come up with some projects to reflect that so that you can hang them on your wall and look at them and have that beautiful moment brought back to you again and again. So for the rest of this, I'm going to go ahead. There's only a couple minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and play some music and uh, I'd love to hear what you think of this and I want to hear your stories and I want to hear about those moments that you've had in your life that have completely shaped who you are today. So please share with me in the comment section below. And by the way, I am on Facebook. I am on Instagram. All of those uh, links are always below in the description box. But you can best talk with me here. If you need to privately message me, you can do so on um, my Facebook page, Art Archaeologist, but I'm hardly ever on there. So if you need a faster response, I'm very quick to respond right here on YouTube on this platform. So enjoy this and make something for yourself, and I will see you next week. Have a great day.